The Boys is back this week with episode 4 of the show, and what a head crusher it was. With Starlight's demise taking center stage, along with Homelander returning to his childhood home, if you can call it that, and addressing where his trauma stemmed from, this was an episode that was very much focused on characters' mindsets and them addressing their past and moving forward in different ways. Whether that be Sister Sage's lobotomy and her yearning to feel normal for a brief moment, Huey's conflict over what to do with his father and forgiving A-Train, and also Frenchie and the horrific acts that he carried out on Colin's family. So with that, let's delve into the episode and break down all that there was to take away from it. Here is The Boys Season 4, Episode 4, Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Like I did last week, I'll break the episode down by each individual character arc as there was a lot going on and it'll just be easier to discuss it that way. John. I mean, Homelander. Anthony Starr absolutely stole the show this week. The showrunner Eric Kripke came out a couple of days before the episode and said that it was Anthony Starr's best performance as Homelander in the entire series so far, so it made me expect big things, and it definitely didn't fail to deliver. At the end of the previous episode, we saw that within Homelander's own mind, he was telling himself that he had to give up the human part of it in order to be stronger than what he was, and the only way for him to do that was for him to be able to go home. Within the show, we've never really delved into Homelander's past that much, and seeing the small flashbacks in this episode and the way that he acted around the people that essentially raised him, like Frank and Marty, it really did show the traumatic events that he went through, and it almost makes sense as to why he's like the way that he is in the present day. He was raised by only truly knowing violence, pain, suffering, and loneliness, and the show did a phenomenal job at making us feel bad for Homelander and what he went through in his childhood but also by pairing that with him brutally murdering the people that put him through that torture, which you know just wasn't the right thing for him to do. It was something which just made our minds feel conflicted. Homelander switching between smiling, laughing, and being friendly to then being cold-blooded, ruthless, and evil at the flip of a coin was so impressive to watch, and it really leaned into the mindset that we've seen him have over the years. Especially in the previous season, and this one specifically, with the multiple different faces in the mirror telling him what to do. When Barbara arrived on the scene, she very much felt like the mother, and she was able to talk to Homelander in a way like we've never seen anybody do before. Authoritative, and like she was able to tell him what to do. Something that Frank and Marty weren't able to do. Barbara mentioned how even though they were pushing Homelander's physical abilities to the limit and were testing to see just how strong and capable he was when he was younger, one thing that they made sure that they did was bring in the best psychologist so that he'd be reliant on approval and his need for love would be paramount and make up a core part of who he was. This is a reason as to why he didn't leave, even when he had the strength to be able to kill everybody in the room and leave the facility. Homelander does have certain traits of a human within him, as much as he doesn't want them, and his need for approval that dictates his life in the present day stems from way back when he was younger. Most likely due to the loneliness that he felt, the neglect that he was always fighting against, and the yearning to be loved that was essentially being programmed into him. As much as Homelander doesn't like humans, part of his mind is molded into being one. As hard as that is to believe, considering he butchered a room full of workers. However, what I found particularly interesting about the bad room at the end was that he let Barbara survive. She was the sole surviving member, and I feel that was probably the case because she was probably like the mother figure out of the workers there. Maybe he couldn't kill her, but by killing everybody else there, it was his way of feeling as though he was enacting the revenge that was within his mind and severing the chain that he felt made him human. That connection that he had to basement level 6. Plus, with all of those people dying, he could have made Barbara want to feel as though she was responsible for their deaths. Or alternatively, she got the worst punishment ever, being locked in a room full of bodies and slowly dying there with nobody coming to save her. I imagine that we'll see if the slaughtering of the people and him addressing his past in this violent fashion will be enough to make him lose that human side to him that he despises and the yearning to be loved. But I don't think it will have done. Addressing your past is often the best way to move on, as we saw with Huey and A-Train, but with Homelander, he took a different approach and didn't address it in a healthy way. He revisited the trauma and acted on it, rather than looking to move on from it. Homelander is a complex character, and that won't be enough to make him change. Butcher Butcher is a real mystery in this season of the show. We've obviously been told that he only has around six months left to live, and that's really pushed him to want to take down Homelander and get Ryan out of his grasp. 
That's essentially his dying wish, as we even saw him say to Mother's Milk in this episode that if he does die before he gets the chance to save Ryan, then he wants Mother's Milk to take him and raise him to be a human. During this episode, Becca kept appearing to him at certain moments throughout it as a vision, mainly when he was on the cusp of blacking out or dying. This shows that she is genuinely his driving force and the only reason he's existing at this moment, because he wants to die by doing right by her. We've been under the impression that Butcher is dying and that this weird worm that he has inside of him was the very thing that was causing him to die. However, it seems as though this worm is something that actually gives him powers. We found out in this episode that Butcher took some Compound V, but he didn't feel as though he had powers. This was until a moment in this episode where once he blacked out, he woke up and Ezekiel was in pieces around Firecracker's trailer, showing that although Butcher didn't feel as though he had powers, he definitely does, and it seems like they're incredibly powerful ones. What's particularly interesting about this is the fact that Butcher has always hated soups with a passion. Temp V was different because it was about him gaining powers and abilities to take down Homelander, whereas now, he's taken Compound V and has essentially become a soup. I don't think he's actually going to be dying, I just think the V is impacting his system in a different way to most. With Butcher always being against soups, this does make him the ultimate hypocrite and it goes against everything that he's ever fought for. With him being on the side of the group that wants soups to be controlled and have less rights than what they do, it's now going to put him in an awfully strange moral dilemma because technically, he could be one of them now, the very thing that he always wanted to defeat. Huey. Huey, Huey, Huey. You can't trust your mother that walked out on you when you were six years old. So Huey's dad is now gonna be a soup. Even though it seemed like Butcher was able to persuade Huey to not give his father compound V, Daphne was staring at Huey the entire time through the frame of the door. And then when Huey left the room, she went into his jacket and put the V into his father's system. With his father opening his eyes, it shows us that he's very much going to make a recovery, but his powers? That's something that we're going to have to wait and find out to see what he has. Huey became a killer of a human in this episode of the show, and the shot where he had blood all over him was very reminiscent of when A-Train killed his previous girlfriend in the first episode of the show. I think that's something that could have potentially changed the approach that Huey had with A-Train and why he was prepared to forgive him. Like many of the other characters, where the past seems to be dictating their present day, it's the same for Huey, and with him actually being prepared to forgive A-Train, it marked a real turning point for both of the characters. This is a complete contrast to Homelander, who said that he forgave the people that caused his trauma, but he truly didn't. Whereas Huey forgave and it was genuine, something which does show that although Homelander's mind is made out to be like it's human, it's not 100%. Starlight I loved Starlight's arc in this episode and the unraveling of her life and the spiraling of all of it to the point where it erupted on stage and ultimately made her lose some of her supporters. It was paced so well and it hit the crescendo right when it needed to. Starlight started the episode in a way where it seemed like she'd be able to help Singer and they'd be able to work together to bring in the soup control bill and take down Vord. But now, Singer wants nothing to do with her following her outburst and the leaking of her private life. Her mother is no longer answering her calls. Her supporters are most likely going to be switching sides. She's lost all power from a political perspective, and the person that did it is still out there. As the episode was unfolding, I felt like the clash between Starlight and Firecracker was going to be happening later on in the season, so I was stoked that we got it in this episode. But I think there's still more to come between these two. There's a rivalry there. I'm not gonna lie, Firecracker looked weak. Starlight owned her on stage, so I wasn't really that impressed. But I suppose Firecracker was only brought in to be a pawn in Sister Sage and Homelander's greater plan. I think we could see Starlight starting to adopt some kind of darkness. There were moments in this episode where she was working on her powers in private, and then, obviously, with the outburst on stage. I think it's a glimpse at the direction that she could be heading towards. She started this season wanting to put her powers down and just live as Annie, but that doesn't seem like it's going to be the case at all. She is Starlight, and she needs to accept that. The past is the past, but not in this season of The Boys, and especially not for Firecracker and Starlight. Sister Sage I actually found that lobotomy scene so difficult to watch. There's always something in every episode of The Boys, and that was it for me. We found out exactly why she performs the lobotomy on herself, and it was as predicted in my video that I released yesterday on Sister Sage. She does it so she can just feel normal for a small moment. We also found out her weakness, which was that she can die like a regular human if killed in the heart. However, the brain? That regenerates so fast that the lobotomy is only temporary. 
Her powers of being the most intelligent, sentient being on the planet are shaping together, and she knew exactly what she needed to do to press Starlight's button so that she'd be made to look bad. She didn't reveal that she knew that Starlight would look to beat Firecracker, because she knew that she probably wouldn't have gone through with it if that was the case. So instead, by using her intelligence, she predicted the behavior and used Firecracker as a piece to get more people in favor of the Homelanders and away from the Starlighters. Frenchie. With Frenchie, Crying Time by Ray Charles was what we heard when he had his first encounter with Colin in this episode, and it definitely concluded with that, in a literal sense. The line that stuck out was, it won't be long until it's crying time, and the crying time definitely arrived. Colin spoke about his parents' and sister's death to Frenchie, and he said that he hid under the bed on the night that they were killed, and whilst doing so, he noticed the scars on the killer's ankles. In the previous episode, we found out that Frenchie was the person that was tasked with making an example out of Colin's mother, and at the end of the episode, Frenchie decided to tell Colin that it was him that butchered his whole family on that fateful night. Frenchie confronted his past and was even prepared to die at the hands of Colin for the actions that he carried out. Colin and Frenchie will most definitely be no more. I can't see them working their way through this. I imagine this is going to shape Frenchie's character moving forward as well. He's probably going to be more reserved within himself and he won't be around the office anymore. He was haunted by the guilt of all of the killings that he's done, so maybe he's done with that type of lifestyle now. Kimiko Kimiko's past is something which is definitely catching up with her too. The Shining Lights organization wanted to seek revenge on her because she killed a few of their members in the previous episode. And along with that, we saw the person that she let go was also after her again. We're slowly learning more and more about the Shining Light organization and the way that they exploit children. But in this instance, it seemed like Kamiko was the person that caused the scars on the woman's face and that it's a memory that has long lived with her. She was taken after she was promised ice cream and then forced to fight Kamiko after she was abducted. I think there will be forgiveness towards Kamiko at some point. It very much feels like it's heading in that direction and the pair will eventually team up. My review of the episode. I thought this was a really good episode of the show. My favorite part of it was Homelander's inclusion in Basement Level 6. Anthony Starr's acting in this episode was just phenomenal and it totally stole the episode. Seeing him addressing his upbringing and feeling like the violent approach that he was taking was doing the right thing and hoping it would help him move on showed just how unhealthy of a person he is and that nothing is probably ever going to be able to change him. Starlight's scene when she was talking to Huey in the office was a scene that I felt was very well performed and was actually quite emotional. Her world is falling apart and we're seeing that unraveling happen in front of our very eyes and I'm emotionally connected to it. Starlight is the most human soup that we've seen, and she's gone through some struggles, so many of us can either sympathize or empathize with her. The more this season is going on, the more it feels like season 4 and season 5 are going to be very heavily connected, almost like a part 1 and part 2. There's only 4 episodes left of this season, and I just can't see how any plot is going to be wrapped up in 4 episodes. This feels like a proper 2 season story. I like the connection to Gen V in this episode as well, where we saw that on the news that the Godolkin 4 were missing following the bloodbath that occurred at the university in the season finale. We know that Sam and Kate are going to be appearing in this season of The Boys, so I'm intrigued to see where their involvement's gonna be. Is anybody else finding Butcher more hilarious than usual in this season of the show? I don't know whether it's because we're getting less screen time with him, or the fact that the story feels a bit heavier than usual. But whenever he's on screen and he says those one-liners, they genuinely make me laugh out loud. With a week to wait, ugh, another week. All we can do is look forward to the next episode. I'm going to be releasing a few theory videos in the next couple of days, so be sure to keep your eyes out. So, there you have it. The Boys Season 4, Episode 4, Ending Explained. If you want to see more videos on The Boys Season 4 or Gen V, then click on the card in the top corner. There's an entire playlist over there. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. What did you think of this episode? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. As always, thanks for tuning into the video and I'll see you in the next one.